What's up, gang? How you guys doing? This is Lieutenant Sal Blue, 28 year law enforcement veteran and the author of the top 25 mistakes in route to the good life. Listen, guys, this is a good book. This is a good book, and I'm not saying it just because I wrote it. It is a good book because I am breaking the norm. I am going against the habit that a lot of people do when it comes to law enforcement. That's right. I'm telling people secrets, right? My secrets. The mistakes that I have made in my route to the good life, right? How things changed, how things got better, how I made mistakes along the way. And I had people to help me and correct those mistakes and change my life and make it better. Man, that is what this book is about. And um, I am uh, giving it to you, a lot of it, with my daily podcast, right? Because when it comes to mistakes, man, until the day that you stop breathing, you'll probably continually still make mistakes in life, right? Because you, if you don't, that just means you stop learning. That just means you stop trying, and that just means you stop trying to improve in who you are and what you're doing with your life. So, if you make mistakes, if you fail, it's okay, guys, right? That is what life is about. It is about continued growth, continued attempts to grow, right? Um, you're always learning if you're always trying. So, you learn from your failures, you learn from your growth. Uh, but I believe most people learn m more from their failures and their mistakes, right? You know, when you grow, you get really happy and you're just moving along and you don't reflect on it, right? You don't reflect on the steps that it's taking you to do that succession for you to succeed. But when you fail, man, oh man, do you lament. You l lament, you sulk, you sob. You think about it for days, the mistake, and how you could have done it better. And it is in that moment that you are doing all this thinking that your growth is going to take place, right? It's because that pain moves you to action. And that's what you need sometimes. You need that pain to move you to action. So as I start today's podcast, I was thinking about something, you know, uh, that <clears throat> I uh, heard somebody say, and uh, they were just going through it in a bad way today, right? That things weren't working out for them. They were extremely upset, yelling and screaming. And I told them, at the end of all of that, I told them to have a good day. And their response to me, because they were so angry and frustrated, was, no, I'm not going to have a good day. And I was stumped. You know, I said, hey, it is your life. It is totally and completely up to you to have a horrible day if you want. It is your choice, right? It is your choice. And a lot of us, right, we're not really making the choice to have a good day. We are allowing life to just have its way and run amok through our emotions and toss us against the wall and throw us down on the ground and push us around, okay, and have its way with us and demand from us poor emotions and bad behavior. That is what happens when you don't take control of your life, guys. And so um, in saying that, I just want to get deep into today's podcast, but I just want to put that out there, guys. You can't let life control, okay, what goes on up here, right? Life is going to happen outside of you and things aren't going to go your way. They're not, right? You may get, you know, one or two shrugs, okay, of things that work out for you. If you planned it through and you worked it out and you thought it out, you know, and you're consistent with it, you might get some things that go your way, but the majority of things in life are not going to go your way, right? It's just not. That's just not how life works for most people. So you have to get a really strong exterior, okay, in order to ward off all of the failures and all of the bad things that are going to happen in your life, guys. That's just it. Bad things happen to good people. So you got to get ready for it and you got to prepare for it. But I'm saying that to say this, right? Have you ever been, right, wishing away today? For the promise of tomorrow. 
How many of you have done it? Tell the truth, right? You know, maybe it was a rainy day and you'd be like, oh, I can't wait till tomorrow. It's going to be so sunny and beautiful, right? Or maybe it was a Wednesday and you go, oh, man, I can't wait until Friday, right? Or, or maybe, you know, in your younger, think about it when you were younger, right? Maybe you were uh, 12 and I can't wait to be 13. I'm going to be a teenager. Yes. Or when you were 20 and you couldn't wait to be 21 so you could be a full all-out adult. Make all your decisions for yourself, right? Until you realize that 22, that being an adult was really, really hard, right? Because you really got to make your own decisions, right? So, um... I just wanted to say that and start off this podcast by getting to what you guys are thinking about wishing away tomorrow, right? Now, if you've been listening to any of my podcasts in the past, you will know, right, that you will eventually hear me say that the next moment is not promised to anyone. Tomorrow is not promised to you, but not let alone tomorrow, the next moment is not promised to you. So... If you want to spend the last moment of your life uh, hoping and wishing for Friday to get here and you don't make it to Friday, you just wasted that moment of your life because you could have been doing something, right? You know, I every day I wake up um, in a panic almost because I know that it is tons of things that I have to get done and and the time that I spend wishing that the situation and circumstances for me were better is time wasted. So I can't spend my time worrying about circumstances. I have to continually do the work and change the circumstances myself, right? So you kind of got to push through it, right? And like I said, guys, I get it, right? Um, I have spent many days wishing that the pain of a... Uh, uh, bad moments in my life, you know, and I've had some struggle moments, right? Heart deep pain. I've lost people that I've loved, right? Um, I have made bad decisions that have hurt me. I've lost money. I've lost friendships. I've lost relationships. I lost it all. And those moments were very painful for me, guys. And I know in those bad moments, man, um, in my life, uh, I wish for happier brighter days will come, right? I would like, you know, I wish that, you know, tomorrow would be better and, and things would be happier and I'm look, trying to look up and be positive, right? But the truth is, guys, you have to learn how to um, absorb those bad moments, right, in your life. <coughs> you have to learn how to absorb those bad moments and take them in and get the most out of them. Milk them for what they are worth, guys. These are strong, powerful lessons that will move you forward in ways that happy moments will not. Right? These growing moments are so powerful. And I'm trying to get you guys to understand it so you can start using them to your benefit, guys. You can use these moments to your benefit and have a happy, more fulfilled life with less mistakes, right? So, but you got to begin to use those moments. Don't wish them away. They're there. Get in there and deal with them and learn how you can figure out how you can do it better the next time. All right. So use that moment for growth. I tell people that all the time. Right. So um, now you spend your time thinking about how you could have done things different if you had a second chance. Or if you could go back in the past, right? We do that, right? Um, you want to redo. You want to take back what you've done. I, I've heard that so many times. So many people go, oh, man, I wish I could take that back. And the fact is, life doesn't work in reverse, right? Life doesn't work in reverse. You know, life is constantly going forward. No matter how many mistakes you make, guys, life is going to continue to go forward, okay? The sun is going to continue to rise, right? And fall from east to west, north to south, whatever, you know, the sun rises in the east and sets to the west, right? So the sun is going to continue to rise and fall every single day, um, whether you get it right or get it wrong. It's just going to continue to happen. So if life doesn't work in reverse, right, then my question to you is this, right? 
how many times have you stated right um a sentence with the words of i can't wait for right you fill in the blank right think back right to your childhood and all those other times that you use that sentence i can't wait for right you can't wait for what oh yes you can wait is what i tell people all the time when when my children say i can't wait till i move out i can't wait till i turn 21 i can't wait until i can drive yeah you can wait the truth is right you have no control over time right time is going to happen no matter what the only control you have is what you do with your time and so I learned this a long time ago when someone told me that says hey you and Oprah Winfrey have the exact same 24 hours in a day right um, the difference is what she did with her 24 hours okay as opposed to what you did with your 24 hours she used the most out of her time and her moments every moment counted in her life right she didn't wait for tomorrow right she had a very very um rough upbringing rough past man almost tragic even a a moments where most people would give up right and and she forged through that and to become a person who took advantage of every single moment after that in her life she didn't allow circumstances okay outside circumstances or what had happened to her in her life okay to stop her from taking advantage of each and every moment that she had to take care of in her 24 hour day and it is nothing stopping you from doing the same right the only thing that's stopping you from doing the same is you right you it is your choice to wake up in the morning and scroll on your phone it's your choice right to waste you know two three four hours a day on your phone or or just in idle chit chat with things that aren't going to move your life forward so it is your choice so then when the moment comes and you're running out of time you're living your life in regret guys and I'm trying to get you not to be that person don't continually be the person that says I can't wait for right now the reason why I'm saying this is because these habits form at a very young age man they form at a very young age and if not corrected right by your parents or someone who knows better right they will be very hard to break when you begin to get older you will have to spend a whole lot more time trying to change these habits when you are older as opposed to correcting them early when you're young right we spend our entire life hoping and wishing for a better tomorrow right but never living today in the moment right you need to be engrossed in the moment right and and I believe that the only way you can truly get engrossed in the moment is if you have a plan so um, tonight before you go to bed write down some things that you are going to do tomorrow when you wake up right write down some things you're going to do tomorrow write them on a piece of a, a yellow piece of paper you know a pad I keep the, my pads everywhere all over my house but write them down on the yellow pad and paper of three things that you're going to do tomorrow no matter what write them down okay and read it before you go to bed read it before you go to bed so that as you sleep you can come up with some answers of some of the things that you have to do tomorrow right and and as soon as you wake up, as soon as you wake up, jump to it. Jump to it. I don't care whether you have to go to work in the morning, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is you wrote down, start it, right? And I tell people that the way to start anything is to start writing the steps out of what you have to do. So as soon as you wake up in the morning, I know you got to go to work. Wake up early enough okay to write out the steps that you have to do that as soon as you get off of work you gotta do this but before you go to work right while you're drinking your morning coffee and getting started you know write out some of the things that you have to do 
right? So boom, I get home, my commute is this, and I have to do this, 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 and this. I have to read this chapter. I have to write out these answers. I have to do this uh, marketing campaign, whatever you got to do, right? And just write it out the night before so that when you get up, you jump right into that task. Then if you have to go to work, you go to work. And when you get off of work, you jump back into what you got to do. So, um, and you need to live every single day with a purpose. Every single day with a purpose and have every moment mean something, right? And that moment doesn't have to just be selfish things that you're doing for yourself. It can be things that you're doing for other people, right? Things of value, giving things of value, um, spending time with your family, map it out. Don't let it come um, on the cuff, right? On the back burner. I never, ever put my family on the back burner. My family has scheduled time. No matter what. No matter what I'm doing, no matter how intense it is, it gets set down for my family because my family is a priority to me. Right? My business and my writing and my books is a priority to me as well. But at the end of the day, the, my entire purpose of trying to create what I'm trying to create is trying to show my family okay some of the proper habits of hard work and dedication and how it pays off in your life okay even if it doesn't pay off like an Instagram post where I'm a millionaire billionaire by tomorrow right I'm just trying to show them the long route of steps to create and have a better life so um, that's why I do what I do right you know it's not for like the money or whatever because the money comes, right? The money comes and I live very comfortable right now. I'm living very comfortable. But it is the habit that is the legacy that I would like to pass on to my children. The hard working, smart working, and consistent working habit that shows them if you put in the work, right, and you consult with the right people, you can have a good life. Right, but you got to be consistent at it every day, and it doesn't end when you're 50, right? 50 plus, right? It doesn't end when you're 60. It ends when it ends when you close your eyes, right? So stop working for retirement, and start working, okay, to become a better you each and every day. And that is the lesson that I'm trying to teach to my children. That is the lesson that I'm trying to teach to all of you. I'm trying to teach you guys. Not to be putting things off, okay? A, not a moment because that moment that you put things off, you may not get that next chance to give somebody a lesson, to teach somebody something of value, okay? And to put something forward to somebody that you learned from someone else who taught you, someone else who didn't give up, right? And that is how it works, you know? So, um, so, um, if this is the position, right, and that's your that our position in life, that we're always hoping for uh, a better tomorrow, but never living for today, right? Um, what can we do to free ourselves from this? And, and that is probably what a lot of people are asking: How can I free myself of a habit that has been shaped and molded since I was a child? What can I do to change this in my life? And so. As I thought about this, I thought about, well, how did I change it in my personal life, right? And how did I help other people change it in their lives? And so um, I thought to myself, I said, what we first have to do is we have to change how we think, right? Um, as somebody just told me the other day, we was talking, they were talking about the Webster Dictionary and the definition of Webster Dictionary, right? And... Um, there's just certain words that um, have a definition in the Webster Diction Dictionary that we use way more often than other words, right? Um, we use fear. We use courage. We use uh, a lot of negative words. So the most words we use in a Webster Dictionary, believe it or not, the most of the words we use are negative words or words that have a negative meaning to us in our lives. And so... Um, the first thing we have to do is we have to change how we think. And, but in order to change how we think, right, we have to change how we think. 
in order to change how we act, right? And and our activities, how our actions, right? Our actions are determined by our habits. So um, when this entire process of thinking, acting, and it becoming a habit is literally in reverse, right? Um, your habit is something that's going to be consistent, something that you're doing each and every day to make the change. Now, um, I tell people that you need to define some of the things that you fear and some of the pain that you have differently. So, um, let's start with how we think, right? Most people who are in the I can't wait for whatever blank zone are usually in some type of pain or an uncomfortable position, right? How are they feeling? They're not happy uh, what they're dealing with, how they are in their life, and they feel like they have no knowledge or power to act upon it. So this is where they're at, and they're in a position, and they feel like they're locked in this position, and they cannot move forward with their life. So in turn, they say, I can't wait for tomorrow, and they would assume that tomorrow is going to bring with it a better understanding for today, right? Tomorrow is going to bring with it, even without them acting, they just believe that as tomorrow moves forward, things will get better, okay? Instead of being the catalyst today of things getting better. So they are relying basically on outside sources, okay, which is the changing of the days in order to... um make their lives better now this is not the case guys it doesn't happen like that right and you have to not only redefine your pain right and I'll tell you me personally I began calling my pain a challenge right and, and I know that it is hard right when the tears are welling up in your eyes and your heart is aching and it feels empty you know, and you say, yo, I'm in pain. I define this as pain. And I'm telling you, don't. I'm telling you, call it a challenge. And make it a habit of every time you're in some form of pain or some form of discomfort, uncomfortable, define it as a challenge. See, challenges in our lives are meant to be met, right, with solutions. If you start defining pain as challenges and feelings of uncomfortable as challenges, right? When you go to sleep at night, your mind will begin to start to process solutions for your problems. And that is how you have to uh, redefine and get out of your own way. Because when you are just sitting in pain, right? You're not doing anything. And, and it is your failure to act. That is causing more pain, guys. It's your failure to act that is causing more pain. You have to understand that you move through pain or the feeling of being comfortable with action. You move through it, guys. Right? You don't just sit in pain. You move through it. Action is the catalyst for many things in our life. And I'm going to use it to help you define many other things as I go through uh, my daily podcast and all the mistakes that I've made and so many other things that help us to shape and mold our life. We are action creatures. We aren't meant to stand still, right? We have two legs to walk. We have elbows to bend, fingers to move, right? Neck, body. We are a movement creature. We are not meant to stand still. We are meant for action. Our brain is always acting. Everything in our body is always moving. We are meant to act. And if you use action, it can heal you in so many ways, including, guys, including pain. Now, I will admit, right, it is not an easy thing to do, but it is not impossible. Right? It is not impossible redefining pain. It is not impossible breaking through challenges with action. It is not impossible. And anytime that I think of the word impossible, right, I imagine the question that my mentor used to ask me um, 
when I got when I started to get ahead of myself, right? Because that's what we do. When we think we have a problem, we get way ahead of ourselves and we try to think of 100 things that we need to do to solve that problem. And my mentor used to always say this thing to me and and I laugh about it to this day. And he would look at me and he would see I'm all worked up and I'm turning red in the face and I'm so frustrated. And he would go, blue. I'd be like, what, man, what? I'm trying to figure this out. And he would say, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> and, and he would say it and he would laugh and I would laugh because, yes, you eat an elephant one bite at a time, which means you have to handle any pain, any discomfort, any changes that you make in your life one step at a time. Worry about the next step, guys. Worry about the next step in order to get ahead in life. The next step is what you must do right now. Okay, don't try to put off for tomorrow step that you need to take today to change your life because when you get in the habit of putting things off for tomorrow it ingrains in your mind that solving your problem is not as important as you say it is right you want to be able to be the type of person that when it comes to a problem you get to it immediately you may not solve it in a day or a week or a month or a year or five years but every day, you're going at it, okay? First thing, first thing to start off your day, you have some things that you've written down and things that you need to take care of. Take the steps and work on them today, right? Don't put off tomorrow. And also, guys, stop saying on Wednesday you wish it was Friday. Stop doing it, man, okay? Stop wishing your life away because one day, you won't have to. It'll all be over. Okay? None of us have gotten out here alive so far. So um, I'm telling you guys, right? Think about that. None of us have gotten out here alive so far. So um, that's it, man. I'm Sal Blue. I am wrapping up this podcast for the day. I hope it has hit you in places where it is needed to hit you. I hope that if you were in pain that I grabbed you today and I spoke to you and it was very, very moving and important and got you to realize that if you start acting and doing something that it is going to help alleviate, okay, the pain and discomfort that you feel, right? We are meant to move, guys. We are meant to move. So listen, um, for all you guys, why don't you hop on over to LieutenantSalBlue.com and grab up your free copy of the Top 25 Mistakes and Routes to the Good Life. Okay, $9.95, you guys pay the shipping, right? That's all I'm asking you guys to do is pay the shipping for me, um, and I will ship this out to you. Autographed copy I'm sending out, by the way. I'm sending out 10,000 10, autographed copies of my book, Top 25 Mistakes and Route to the Good Life. So go on over to LieutenantSalBlue.com and grab your autographed copy today. Click on the link. As soon as this is done, stop, click on the link, right? Type it in, LieutenantSalBlue.com. Put it in, and uh, you'll see my whole page. Uh, you see me and my family. I'll talk about, hey, what's going on? This is me. Thanks for checking me out. Welcome to my page. And you guys will get down. Hey, I want my copy, $9.95. Boom, get that. I'll send it out to you autographed. Okay. Also got an upsell for the audio book if you want to see that, uh, listen to me. Um, and uh, you can play it at two times speed and get through the entire book in a day. In a day, man. You get through the entire book in a day. So um, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook. And Twitter, okay, at LieutenantSalBlue.com, as well as hop on over to my Facebook group, Top 25 Mistakes, where second half is help first halfers, okay, to live a better life through transparency. So that's it, man. You guys have a great night, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow with my daily podcast. Deuces later. <laughs>